All right, everybody. Good morning. We are moving along with the edge prospects, and we are currently sitting on day three. We have made our way to day three of the edge prospects. We're going over a lot of players today, and I think pretty much all of them will either go in day three or they won't go at all. So, a lot of guys who are going to go with a low value pick or no pick at all. And we're just going to try to find the guys who are going to surprise, basically. Uh, first guy is Isaiah McGuire, a Missouri Tiger, 22 years old. Um, kind of an interesting one. This guy's a little bit frisky, but also it's a little bit of an irregular fit, admittedly. Uh, he's almost 270 pounds, 34-inch arms, though. We like that. Was pretty slow at the combine, 4 7 6 40 with a 172 10 10-yard split. Not really what you're looking for in an edge. There's definitely an argument to be made that he needs to uh, bulk up and become an interior lineman. But I kind of go the other way with him. I think that he should probably uh, slim up, try to speed up a little bit, and uh, commit to being an edge rusher. And um, I think he could do it. He had a pretty good year these last two years. Uh, last year, eight and a half sacks in 12 games, 14 tackles for loss, pretty solid production. Um, he's actually got a pretty good mix of speed and power. I know the speed didn't really show up at the combine, but it shows up on the football field. He uses his hands well when he's trying to win against uh, pass protectors. He... Gives good effort. He never stops working hard. He's technically sound and a smart football player. He's good at diagnosing plays, diagnosing run plays, not falling for the misdirection. Uh, his run defense in general is pretty solid. And despite his size, I do get the impression that he's going to work fine in a 4-3 and a 3-4. So I'm not super worried about him being too big and too slow. Although I do think he'll probably need to drop a little bit of weight and add a little bit of speed. Now... All that being said, that's going to have to be in balance with the fact that I do think he needs to get a little bit stronger. Sometimes he's a little too aggressive, and I think he gets out of control. Like, he'll overrun the play a little bit because he's just pushing a little too hard. And, I mean, there's no way around his combine scores at the end of the day. He can drop some weight, uh, get a little bit quicker, but you're still talking about a guy who is not explosive, really. So, Isaiah McGuire, he's kind of the definition of a day three pick at the end of the day. There's a lot to like with Isaiah McGuire, I think, but there's not really a lot to love. Um, this is a guy who has a chance of going day two. PFF and ESPN both have him day two. The aggregate has him in day three barely, though, and that's kind of where I fall. That combine performance kind of gives me pause here. I, I can't spend a day two pick on an edge who produces these 40-yard uh, dash numbers. And the 10-yard split, of course. Kind of a mess. So... I would, get, I would pick him any time in day three and feel fine about that, though. All right. Next up, we have Nick Herbig of Wisconsin. Interesting prospect here. 21 years old, younger. Uh, also a little bit on the smaller side. In fact, he is small enough to where some people think he may end up as a inside linebacker, an off-ball linebacker. Uh, also really short arms, by the way. 31 and a quarter, 9 and a quarter inch hands. Combine was decent. 4 6 5 40, 1 5 9, 10 yard split is okay. Good uh, bench press numbers as well. A few big boards have him going day two, but the aggregate has him going as a mid fourth round pick. Um, last two years, he's played 24 games and recorded 30 tackles for loss and 20 sacks. So he's actually been extremely productive for the Wisconsin Badgers defense. On a defense that has had a fair few really good players pass through, he um, was one of their standouts. Um, very powerful with his hand punches. He holds up really strong against the run. He's got good strength, even though he's small. He actually holds up pretty good against the run. He's good at block shedding, which is surprising given how short his arms are. Although I would say that is something that you wonder, will it translate to the pro game? He's got a pretty good kit of pass rush moves. He's got, you know, the up and under. He's got the rip move. He's got the swim move. He's got some moves for a 21-year-old. He's good at understanding leverage. He gets low. He's always the low man when he's engaging with linemen. And he's somebody who's always going to work pretty hard to the whistle. He's definitely somebody who's going to maximize what he can get with his effort. So, appealing traits there. But at the end of the day, I do think he is undersized for the edge. And there's also some concern about how he's going to fit in a 3-4 because he really hasn't done much zone drops. So, if you're looking at him as a 3-4 outside linebacker, which we are, he's going to have to do that some of the time. And that was not something that he did at Wisconsin. Um, I kind of feel like 
this might be another good example of a guy who does well against college competition, but he can't translate it to the NFL because his arms are so short, because he's relatively undersized. So some some scouts are even going to say, hey, this guy should be an off-ball linebacker. I don't know if I feel that way. Um, I kind of feel like if he tried to do that, his short arms would actually hurt him still because it's you end up missing a lot of tackles when your arms aren't that short, but when your arms aren't long enough. But I will admit there's reason to believe that he ends up feeling like a Micah Parsons kind of role in the NFL because he's just not going to be able to hold up as an every down edge player. Maybe that's where his future lies. It's just overall kind of a gamble because he's got such a weird physical profile. But I do think you are getting a good pass rusher who can rotate in a little bit. I'll take him in the fifth round. I don't feel too bad about that. Okay, now we have Ali Gay of the LSU Tigers, a 24-year-old, 6'6", very tall, 263 pounds, a little bit on the heavy side. Long arms, though, 34 and a quarter, 9 and a half inch hands. Um... Most of the big boards have him hanging around the 6th or the 7th. The only major big board that I found that has him in like the 5th is the Draft Network. I, it should be said though, the Aggregate, which uses, again, a ton of different big boards, has him in the 5th. So, I don't know if I see him as a 5th round player personally. This is a guy who played as a freshman and hasn't really developed at all from that freshman year. Like he had 2.5 sacks last year. I think he had about that many sacks his freshman year. Part of it was because he missed all of 2021 with an injury, but the light bulb just hasn't gone on yet. He looks the part. There's no doubt about that. He's a good athlete for his size. He's really good at shooting gaps and making uh, plays in the backfield against the run. Like in 2020, you go back to that season, he averaged nearly a tackle for loss a game. Um, he has speed and he has good hands when he's rushing the passer. So he can get the edge with his speed and then use his hands to deconstruct the block and actually finish the play. There were moments of him looking like a star in college. There were. But at the end of the day, it just flashed. It never stayed consistent, and he didn't develop very much over his college career. Like I said, Ali Gay the freshman and Ali Gay the senior, very similar players. Um, when he's the strong side defender against the run, he gets pushed around, which is troubling because he's so big. And you're still getting the leverage problems, where he's so tall, he can't win the leverage battle. Um, he really struggles to do much of anything getting to the quarterback if he doesn't get around the edge with his speed. Like, there isn't a whole lot left in his bag of tricks after the speed doesn't work. So he's going to be somewhat easy to neutralize for NFL offensive linemen. He, he, he's not going to give you much bend. So, Ollie Gay... He's a guy that if you get, you're hoping the light bulb goes on a little bit late because this guy has some upper level traits. He's a good athlete. He's got really long arms. He's big. He's fast for his size. But hard for me to believe that it's likely to happen. I would spend a fifth round pick on him. I think a fifth round pick would be okay because there is, I, I don't know if it's upper level upside, but there is a pretty decent amount of upside with Ali Gay. So... If he's there in the fifth round, I'm pretty good with it. Might be able to get him a little bit later. And I would be all over that because I do believe there is some small chance that things unlock. And again, it is kind of weird that we're here and he's 24 years old and it hasn't... It's barely shown itself. But I kind of feel like it's still there. But admittedly, not great odds. Okay, one more guy for this video. It's Habakkuk Baldonado of the Pittsburgh Panthers. Another Pittsburgh Panther defensive player, 23 years old, good size, what you would expect, 6'4", 251 pounds, 33-inch arms is okay, 10.5-inch hands is pretty good too, uh, pretty slow at the combine, his jumps were okay, 35 inches, 10-foot broad, 7 3 cone, 4 4 20-yard shuttle, 21 bench presses, so kind of a mediocre combine, not bad, not good. Uh, ESPN is the only big board that I found that really likes him, they have him in the 5th. All the other major big boards have him much lower, but the aggregate actually has him in the fifth. So if you incorporate all these smaller, less known big boards, fifth round. Um, part of the problem with the Baldonado is that he had a limited 2022 campaign because he only played nine games. He gave you two sacks after a year where he gave you nine. He gave you five tackles for loss after a year where he gave you 12. 
So the development wasn't really there, and <clears throat> we didn't get to see the best version of him. But as a prospect, he's got an explosive first step. He does have some pass rush moves. He can do some, you know, counters to beat offensive linemen. It's not just pure speed or pure power. He's got good lateral agility for a guy who's going to be on the edge. His hands are pretty active. He's good at utilizing his hands when he's engaging with offensive linemen. And he's strong enough to hold his gap against the run. When he engages with a lineman, he's not going to try to spin off of him and give up his gap. He's going to hold strong and give you a, a, somebody else a chance to make the play, even if he's not the one doing it. Um, he moves in a little bit of an awkward, kind of segmented way. Needs to be smoother and quicker in that area. He also needs to be smoother and quicker with his processing and his decision making. He needs to sink his hips to win leverage. Right now, he plays standing straight up. Takes too long to cover space, like this 4-8-40 time is not... Um, it, I mean, it is pretty indicative of what you see on the football field, unfortunately. And, of course, the fact that he didn't break out the way he could have in 2022, that would have probably launched him into at least day two, I would guess. So, I think he's just a little bit forgettable. He's a decent edge prospect, but there's nothing super standout about him. I feel like this guy kind of gets lost in the uh, muck with a bunch of different guys. I could see him becoming a decent backup, but I don't ever see anything resembling like starter potential here. Just seems like another guy that you pick in the sixth round or so, and you're like, okay, um, maybe he'll make the team, maybe he'll make the practice squad, maybe he'll end up earning a few snaps down the line, maybe he won't, and you just kind of understand that you're not getting upper-level potential with Baldonado. All right, those are the first group of day three edges. We are going to be moving on to more later today. See you guys then. Go Hawks!